Hello and welcome to Beyond Reproach. This is Tux Lurzel. Stephanie Domingo. We come to you from Bushwick, Brooklyn, where we record on land belonging to the Lenape Nation, a nation that is one of many still very much out here doing its thing, and we would like to acknowledge that. This is the show where we talk about whatever the hell we want, because yes. we don't have a format for minisodes anymore. We're out here living our lives without a format. <laughs> Pray for us. <laughs> minisodes are the don't. best. They are. So in this episode, I am talking about ugly laws. Ugly laws. Yes. Oh, dear. It came up briefly <laughs> it in sure my last scandal when I talked about Rosemary Kennedy um, I mentioned it in passing, but I was too busy crushing Tux <laughs> with my story that I thought was so light. I don't know how you thought that story was light. It was, I don't know. It felt light to me. It was light because the last story you did was... Genocide. <laughs> like, yeah. so soul-crushing. I don't know. I just, I'm like, it's rich people. It's, yeah. But it, yeah, it, looking back in the totality of the whole scandal, it was not light. I mean, I certainly had fun roasting Joe yeah. Kennedy, dragging him to hell. And she changed a lot of things for the better. Yes. So I think that's kind of my, that's why it felt lighter. Because yeah. it wasn't just soul crushing for no reason. Yes. Okay. That I get. Yeah. Not like Soa or, yeah. Oh my God. Like, like look at all these horrible things and... That's nothing still, has changed. Nothing has changed. Still business as usual. Yeah. Yeah. So it felt it felt different to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, fair. So the first ugly law that was passed in this country, because these laws started in England. Mm -hmm. This is one of these shitty things that crossed the pond. So the first law was passed in San Francisco, of all places, in 1867. Okay. Decades before the law spread elsewhere. Um, so why San Francisco? San Francisco was pretty interesting at this time. It was the perfect storm of poverty, um, racism, mm. and ableism. Okay, yeah. Yeah. There were a lot of people who were who came into San Francisco expecting to, to become millionaires because of the gold rush. Sure, yeah. And they had their hopes kind of smashed sure. with reality. You know, they had fallen on hard times and they had uprooted and move their whole lives to California. So they, they just stayed there. Yeah. And at this time, if you've, especially if you've listened to this podcast, you know that there were also um, Chinese um, immigrants mm -hmm. there at the time who the moment they stepped off the boat were stereotyped in racist, really dehumanizing ways. And they were left out of a lot of employment opportunities just because of how they looked. Yeah. So a lot of them were on the streets. And this was after the Civil War, so there were a lot of amputees coming back to San Francisco okay, yeah. who were disabled, oh boy. and they were unable to work, so a lot of them also ended up on the streets, okay. you know, begging for resources, mm -hmm. because the government kind of abandoned them. This sure. was before we had any sort of laws that protected disabled individuals. Or, yeah, or veterans. Veterans, too, yeah. yeah. Exactly. There's a reason why this happened in San Francisco. And newspapers, of course, made the whole situation so much worse Imagine by, that. by doing what they did best, just fanning the flames of division and just mess. <laughs> so according to some trash rag called the Weekly Mercury, this is a quote, San Francisco seemed destined to become a city of refuge for all the Lazzaroni of the Pacific coast. I had to look up what Lazzaroni meant. I'm just like, is that like a fancy word for lazy? Yeah. Because it's like L-A-Z-Z-A-R-O-N-I, like kind of like macaroni, but like yeah. Lazzaroni. It's a terminology given to the lowest class in Napoli, like people huh. who they considered idle beggars. Okay. Or Lazzaroni. Huh. Is there a lot of Italians in I don't think San there Francisco? was. And I'm like, this is a deep, this is like a, a deep slur cut yeah, right now. This yeah. is like a B-side sort of slur <laughs> mess. Yeah. So there was another paper. I found this quote that read, as one treads our, our streets, this paper is from San Francisco, as one treads our, our streets, the eye is shocked at the frequent appearance of maimed creatures whose audacity is only paralleled by the hideousness of of their deformities. Gross. What a shitty, right? awful thing to say. Yeah. These were things commonly just in newspapers at the time. This was a sentiment that no one, like it, was, it didn't 
seem out of place. Yeah, yeah. People were writing things like this freely. So in July of 1867, the San Francisco Board of Supervisors approved order number 873. This order banned street begging. Okay. And here is where the ugly law part comes in. They also restricted, quote, certain persons from appearing In the streets or public places. Certain persons. That's what the law said? Yes. Which is so fucking broad. Certain persons basically meant anyone who they didn't like the the, the cut of their jib. Yeah. So That's viol- so fucked up. So how, fucked up. How do you enforce a law that is is so I'm, vague? I'm about to get into that. Because it applied to just everyone. It Literally was, anyone. It was so hard to enforce. Yeah. But at the same time, it was hard to argue your case. Because yeah. it's like... You could just kind of single out essentially poor people and say like, hey, you need to be off the street. And violators were hit with a $25 fine. Holy shit. Which was a lot of money. In today's money, that's about $460. Oh, my God. Or 25 days in jail. Most of the time, both. Because these were people who were on the streets. They didn't have $25. Yeah. So they would be put into jail. If they had $25, they wouldn't be on the street. Exactly. And that's like our our whole modern prison system kind of... I don't really want to get into this, but through researching ugly laws, I learned this this thing called pay to stay. Have you heard of this? No. It like, reading about it, like, I had to stop reading because I was crying so hard. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. So people are being put into jail and they're being charged for their room and board like they're staying at the fucking Marriott. What? Yes. So they they're didn't... leaving jail after serving their sentence and they're being hit with thousands of dollars of debt. Their debt is going to creditors. Their lives are being ruined. And they, yeah, it's look into this. I'm going to put a, a link from the BBC because I learned this from a British tab. Well, B- BBC is not a tabloid, but I learned this from a British paper. Yeah. They don't talk about it. I've never heard state. of this. I didn't know that this was a thing. And it's in 49 states. What? Yes, it's bad. But yeah, it doesn't I just I kind of just want to talk about ugly laws, but this is this is the downstream consequence of yeah. from having these ugly laws so early in our nation as we did. So in 1881, Chicago's alderman, a man named James PV, he had this goal, this like lofty shit goal. He wanted to rid Chicago of all street obstructions. And by street obstructions, he meant beggars. Uh-huh. This is a quote from him. The one-legged individual who, with drooping eye and painfully lugubrious countenance, holds forth his hat for pennies. Or the fellow who yells, bananas, which is really confusing. And the woman who, with two sick children, who is drawn through the carding machine in a woolen mill and who grinds, this is in quotes, Molly Darling. I'm guessing that was a song. Mm. Who grinds Molly Darling incessantly on a hurdy gurdy <laughs> on a street corner? I, I don't know what any of this <laughs> yeah. shit means, you it's guys. In English, please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this means. This is banana. Yeah. <laughs> when I saw this quote, I'm just like, what? <laughs> this man just really hates poor people who are disabled. Yeah. And is just like painting this really rich picture in his mind, but like no one knows what the fuck this is. What's a hurdy gurdy? What? I was going to look into like all these terms and like what they meant. And I'm just like, fuck this man. Yeah. Um, yeah. I get what he's trying to say. But I think now is time for, you know, a little break. A little break. break. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Give me some, give me a moment to look up a hurdy gurdy. <laughs> <laughs> Take nine plus 10 and we're live. Let's get it, fam. I'm one of your hosts, Hamish Lackman. And I'm your other host, Aaron Conley. And welcome to our show, The Third Wheel. You know, when you like crush on someone, you just sometimes act a bit like silly in front of them. Pop, pop, <laughs> <laughs> you guys just roast yeah. each other. <laughs> Those are ugly topics to talk about and they're really uncomfortable. Being out of your comfort zone is where the growth happens. There were children who were carrying guns to school. Children as in like 13 to 16 year olds. They used to carry guns to school. There were teachers who came before us who had been shot dead by the students. I've realised significantly since before meditating and after meditating how much more I just notice things around me and realise things and it makes life a lot more just beautiful so i live in between the seafood market where it's supposed to have first originated and the hospital where it was first sort of confirmed and diagnosed like jumping on this podcast the third wheel i I love being (laughs) the third wheel right now (laughs) it's fantastic 
Whew, okay, we're yeah. back. We just looked we, up a, a hurdy gurdy. It's an instrument that's kind of like an accordion. It sounds like an accordion, at least. It sounds like a bagpipe. Yeah. But it looks like a cross between an accordion and a violin. violin. And it has a crank at the end. So, so you have to strange. grind it. Yeah. But then there's like keys and strings, but it sounds like a bagpipe. Yeah. And it's all made out of wood. Yeah. It's such it's a wild fantastic looking. creation. It's going to be in the show notes. I I feel stupid. I didn't look it up, but like, <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know this was an instrument at all, let alone that it still exists and there are people on YouTube playing it. Yeah. Look up a hurdy-gurdy. Look up a video of someone playing a hurdy-gurdy. So wow. strange. Um, but yeah, thank you for that. That was yeah. great. So in Portland, a woman who became kind of infamous, her name was, they referred to her as Mother Hastings. She was told by authorities in her city that she was, quote, too terrible a sight for the children to see. What? And when she was asked, she's like, I guess they mean like my crippled hands. They gave the city of Portland gave her money to live, leave the city. Because they were tired of looking at her. Your hands are ugly. Go away. Yeah. Here's the money. Yeah. So go they live ga- in the forest. They gave her enough money. She she ended up moving to L.A. However, just as leaders were about to enact ugly laws there, I was just going to say, moving to a city is not the move if if you're being kicked out. Yeah. Because your hands are too ugly. Yeah, I'm guessing she had some sort of deformity. There's a lot of research about this because, especially in Portland, because they're now using, they're kind of pitting poor people against disabled people. They're trying to create these spaces, similar to New York, they're creating these spaces that are, that are more, quote, accessible mm-hmm. for wheelchairs, but they're like, we're getting rid of this bench. Oh, for, yeah. So poor people can't sleep on them. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But then they're making, that makes it inaccessible for people who need to sit. Yes. <sighs> so these laws weren't just limited to san francisco chicago and portland they spread to other cities like denver reno omaha columbus manila in the philippines because it was a u.s um territory at this time they created ugly laws in manila and enforced that shit the whole motherfucking state of pennsylvania had an ugly law that included intellectual disabilities that you couldn't be out in public if you it's just yeah you're too you're too stupid to leave the house kind of, like yeah we're so gross in yeah. this country what the fuck so they tried to enact laws in new york city and every time they brought it up for a vote it failed thankfully yeah during the great depression laws were extremely popular in cities along railroad lines because mm-hmm. many they paid a lot of people to leave the city okay so once they got on a train they kind of stayed there yeah and started to linger so they made these laws at certain railway stops to continue their journey elsewhere basically some of these laws were just called unsightly beggar laws and i'm like this is this is rude you guys are really rude with this um they fell out of favor thankfully after world war one because there was such a huge population of disabled veterans coming back and we finally cared yeah cared is is a strong word yeah we didn't care but we stopped making these laws and we started to repeal some of them um the last ugly law was removed from the books in chicago in 1975 it was on the books for i think 92 years were they still enforcing it though they weren't yes and no yeah because people who are unhoused they're arrested in new york Yeah, yeah, yeah they kind of use that kind of vagrancy you're here in public for too long kind of thing. We don't want you here. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't necessarily use the ugly laws on the books. They used... I mean, there's a way to criminalize homelessness or... or, Yeah, poverty. Yeah. So they didn't didn't really even need it on the books. Sure, yeah. So this sentiment that, you know, regarding marginalized people targeted by these laws still pervades our culture, as we were just talking about. Yeah. Um, it's still very easy to just pick up someone for being poor because some businesses called and said like, hey, this guy's outside. He's bothering my customers. And they pick them up and they put them in jail for the night. Yeah. And then they send him home with a bill. I was just going to say. And then yeah. they charge them. Yep. And in New York, we have this huge problem in with public spaces being renovated, reinvigorated. They have made benches 
so um, anti unhoused people. Yeah. They have these little like segments. A lot of the benches are folding, so you can't lay down on them. Mm-hmm. It's really, really messed up. And I, if it's happening in New York, I assume it's happening in most places. I'm sure, As, yeah, especially urban centers. Because benches used to be just a feature of public spaces because. You know, people like a place to sit down for a minute and take in the sights, mm-hmm. but we're so anti-poor. Yeah. Like, we just expect everyone to pull themselves up with their bootstraps, their imaginary bootstraps, and just be okay because someone who is poor, like, reflects, makes us feel bad. Yeah. Yeah, I just, this story, it's it's a large one, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about it because there's just so many tentacles that have sprang from it that still exists today um it is still very much criminal to be poor yeah so yeah and reaching researching this story i learned about the pay to stay and i was just really really appalled by all of it but that's a that's a scandal for another day i think i i probably have to do a full episode about it i was gonna say we should do a mini on that because this sounds bigger than a mini yeah Yeah. yikes so i'm just gonna leave it here (laughs) i thought this story this like little like i'm just gonna do ugly laws for a mini and it's gonna be fun and and like not, I, not that it's going to be fun. It's going to be short. Yes. And then I saw pay to stay and I'm like, oh, no. Oh, something to look forward to. Why? <laughs> yes. Oh, dear. Okay. As always. Well, thank you for elaborating on that. Because when you mentioned them in the last episode, I definitely was like, what the fuck is that? They They just made it illegal for you to exist outside and not be perfect. Begging had a played a big role in these ugly laws. Yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of ugly people with money that were <laughs> yes, <laughs> totally fine, fine to, be outside. to be outside. Yes, yeah. totally. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, my drink is gone. That I that took it out of me. So I guess that means we are done. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. No, no, that was I'm great. Sorry, I'm sorry. I've done it again. You've done. I've it. done it again. I just. What have I done? Uh, you're just really good at crushing my soul this season. I, I know. I don't. I feel like last season you were doing this to me. I was the soul crusher last season. Yeah. We, we have to alternate. Yeah. We, we take breaks <laughs> because it's it's not sustainable if we don't. Well, because it's, you know, you're not just crushing <laughs> other souls. You're crushing your own. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I am crushing my own. Yeah. Oh, good times. <laughs> Everyone loves this podcast for, for good reason. Hey, <laughs> I think important to learn this these are very important stories for sure yeah thank you guys so much for listening to beyond reproach this has been tux lurzel it's been stephanie domingo and i'm sorry (laughs) (laughs) uh thank you to tim clough our editor sound engineer and podfather we couldn't do this without you all right bye y'all bye Beyond Reproach is proudly recorded in Bushwick, Brooklyn, on land belonging to the Lenape Nation. Please note that we are not historians, we're just a couple of drunks who never shut up and love history. A full list of all source information can be found in the show notes on our website. Please take a moment to rate, review, and subscribe. And remember that written reviews are especially important. If you like us, please do one of two things. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, or send this episode to a friend, family member, or someone who you think would be into it. Don't forget to follow us on social media and make sure you follow us on Instagram because we post our cocktail recipes the Thursday before each full episode. Please drink along with us if you are not driving. We also have a shop at beyondreproachpod.com. Get your merch, brand yourselves, and we have exclusive content on Patreon where you can directly support the production of our show.